What evidence is there of Homo sapiens Neanderthal hybrids? In this video, I will discuss three instances of evidence for hybrids, found in Portugal, Israel, and Romania. In Portugal, a great mystery was unearthed in the bed of a rock shelter in the Lepedo Valley, which lies 85 miles to the north of Lisbon. Buried for millennia, archaeologists discovered the bones of a four-year-old child, which was the first complete Paleolithic skeleton found the Iberian Peninsula. But the significance of the discovery was far greater than this, because analysis of the bones revealed that the child had the chin and lower arms of a human, but the jaw and build of a Neanderthal, suggesting that he was a hybrid, the result of interbreeding between the two human groups. The finding casts doubt on the accepted theory that Neanderthals disappeared from existence 30,000 years ago, and were replaced by Cro-Magnons, the first early modern humans. Rather, it suggests that Neanderthals mixed with modern humans and created human hybrids, a fact that would have dramatic implications for evolutionary theorists around the world. The discovery was made when archaeologists went to investigate reports that prehistoric rock paintings had been found, which turned out to be true. In the course of their investigations they discovered a limestone rock shelter. The upper two or three yards of the cave fill had been bulldozed away by the landowner, which left a hanging remnant of sediment in a fissure along the back wall, but this contained such a density of upper Paleolithic stone tools, animal bones and charcoal that it was clear that it had been an important occupation site. Subsequent excavations confirmed this, producing radiocarbon dates of 23,170 to 20,220 years old, which is surprising because Neanderthals were thought to have died out by 28,000 years ago. While collecting surface material that had fallen from the shelter, archaeologists inspected a recess in the back wall. In the loose sediments they recovered several small bones, stained with red ochre they thought could be human. This turned out to be a child's grave, the only Paleolithic burial ever found in the Iberian Peninsula. This child had been carefully buried in an extended position in a shallow pit, so that the head and feet were higher than the hips. The body had been placed on a burned Scots pine branch, probably in a hide, covered in red ochre. The ochre was particularly thick around the head, and stained the upper and lower surfaces of the bones. A complete rabbit carcass was found between the child's legs, and six ornaments were found, four deer teeth which appear to have been part of a headdress, and two periwinkle shells from the Atlantic, which are thought to have been part of a pendant. An excavation project was launched to retrieve all the remnants of the child's body. The work was difficult because tiny plant roots had penetrated the spongy bones. Sifting of the disturbed sediments led to the recovery of 160 cranial fragments, which constitute about 80% of the total skull. The bulldozer had crushed the skull, but fortunately had missed the rest of the body by 2 centimeters. Once the recovery process was complete, the skeletal remains were sent to anthropologists to analyze the remains. This is when the most surprising discovery was made. They found that the proportion of the lower limbs were not those of a modern human, but rather resembled those of a Neanderthal. On the other hand, the overall shape of the skull is modern, as is the shape of its inner ear, and the characteristics of the teeth. Although the skull was most similar to that of a modern human, one anomaly was detected, a pitting in the occipital region, which is a diagnostic and genetic trait of Neanderthals. Scientists concluded that the Lepedo child was a morphological mosaic, a hybrid of Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans. Yet the two human forms are not thought to have coexisted later than 28,000 years ago in Iberia. In a second example of hybridization, archaeologists digging in a cave in northern Israel uncovered teeth dating to at most 38,000 years ago that display a mix of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens features. Neanderthals are thought to have been long extinct in Israel by then, though some may have survived later in isolated pockets. The teeth, therefore, likely belong to humans who had interbred with our evolutionary cousins. The discovery of the teeth further attests that the Neanderthals did not disappear completely, in the sense that their genome survived in sapiens populations, as hybrid humans. This is something scientists have already been aware of for nearly a decade, as genetic research shows that all humans outside sub-Saharan Africa carry between 1-3% Neanderthal DNA. Manat Cave was discovered by chance, during construction work. 
Archaeological digs there have uncovered a treasure trove or prehistoric finds, including a 55,000-year-old skull thought to belong to some of our earliest human ancestors out of Africa. The recent study is based on much later finds at Manet, including six teeth that were unearthed in layers dated to between 38,000 and 34,000 years ago. The researchers conducted micro-CT scans and 3D analysis on four of the teeth, comparing multiple features in their morphology to a sample of dozens of prehistoric chompers from other sites across the world. Unlike bones, teeth are preserved well, as they are made of enamel, which is the substance in the human body most resistant to the effects of time. Scientists were able to use the external and internal shape of the teeth found in the cave to associate them with two hominin groups, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. All four teeth, which belonged to different four different individuals, displayed a mix of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens features. This usually happens in cases of interbreeding. Therefore this was a Homo sapiens population with a strong Neanderthal genetic component. However, scientists cannot be completely sure of that conclusion because it was not possible to extract DNA from the teeth, a problem often encountered when dealing with finds that were preserved in the hot climate of the Middle East. We know that early Homo sapiens and Neanderthals did coexist in the Levant, mingling thousands of years before humans even reached Europe. The manate teeth most closely resemble specimens like those found in the Oase cave in Romania. In that case, researchers have strong genetic evidence of Neanderthal sapiens hybridization. In the third example, the analysis of the jawbone of a man who lived about 40,000 years ago, reveals the closest direct descendant of a Neanderthal and a modern human. In fact, the ancient man had a Neanderthal great-great-grandfather. DNA shows that a modern human who lived in what is now Romania between 37,000 and 42,000 years ago had at least one Neanderthal ancestor, as little as four generations back. Scientists have known for at least half a decade that living humans bear traces of Neanderthal blood, or more specifically, Neanderthal DNA. Just when and where our ancestors mixed with their now extinct cousins, has been tricky to pin down until now. The 40,000-year-old Romanian man has the highest percentage of Neanderthal DNA of any modern human ever studied. The specimen, known as Oase 1, consists only of a male jawbone, and from the moment it was discovered its shape suggested that it might belong to a hybrid between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Those claims have remained controversial, but the new analysis lays the controversy to rest. The genome sequenced from the samples was incomplete, but it was enough for the scientists to conclude that between 6% and 9% of the man's genome is Neanderthal in origin. In contrast, people living today have 4% Neanderthal DNA, at most. Indeed, that difference is more significant than it might seem. Scientists found seven huge pieces of chromosomes that seem to be purely of Neanderthal origin. This means pieces had to come from a relatively recent ancestor, since they hadn't yet been broken up by the reshuffling that happens in each generation as our parents' chromosomes combine. The non-Neanderthal genome sequences, meanwhile, show that Oase 1 isn't related to humans living today. Therefore, his ancestral line died out at some point. The DNA analysis represents a biotechnological breakthrough, but it also puts paleoanthropologists a step closer to fully answering the hotly debated question, what happened to wipe out the Neanderthals? The breakthrough here is the ability to say this specific person had a Neanderthal great-great-grandfather. That puts a human timescale on the relationship. If scientists can figure out when mixing took place in different parts of Europe and the Middle East, they'll be able to say in detail just how rapidly humans spread across these regions, how long they were in contact with Neanderthals, and maybe tell us at last why Neanderthals vanished. Of course when it comes to evolution, there's always controversy. Some scientists believe modern humans left Africa more than 100,000 years ago, while others believe it was only 50,000 years ago. The discovery of Homo sapiens Neanderthal hybrids gives some evidence as to what was going on during that time, so long ago. But why did Neanderthals eventually go extinct? When the ancient astronaut hypothesis is considered, we are confronted with the possibility that modern humans triumphed because they were more intelligent and skilled in the arts of war, as the offspring of the Anunnaki alien gods, that had bred and trained Homo sapiens for fighting. 